All right, so now I'm going to transition you to the Ross Service Coordinator brand. Um, this is one of my all-time favorite uh, brands. Ross has been good to me. Uh, so the purpose of the Ross brand, very similar to the FSS, all these programs are similar. It's serve the residents mm -hmm. with social programs. Um, but they do have some unique features to them. So the Ross is for you to um, gives you the opportunity as a public housing authority to request funding from HUD to work with the residents in your public housing units only. So only public housing. If the housing authority signs a chap agreement for that development, that development is no longer eligible. And if the housing authority is turning everything over to RAD, then they're no longer eligible to the extent where if they do have a loss, but they do sign a chap agreement or convert, by the time they're up again for their renewal, they're not eligible. And all the housing authorities now that have signed chap agreement and have or converted to RAD and sits here and here you talk about loss and is interested is no longer eligible. Because what uh, HUD is saying is that in your RAD deal now, you should build in social service um, monies and programs from the revenue that you're getting. So this program basically works with the residents to assist them to achieve self-sufficiency. All right, so Thompson Housing Authority, you have a loss there. Yes. Oh, I'm sorry. You Thompson. I'm You're sorry. One of those ones. I'm Thompson. I'm sorry. <laughs> Uh, can you tell us a little bit about what you're doing with your Ross grant? I'm going to be honest with you. I don't even know what the Ross coordinator is doing. Really? I don't. Okay. I'm going to be honest with you. I don't know. Now you will find out. Will if find she's out. not doing it, you're like, hold on. It's live. I'm serious. I'm not trying to be, you know, I'm just, I'm being honest. I really don't know. Okay. I really don't know. All right. Uh, that's what I'm here to find out. So. <laughs> Okay, tell me. Tell us this. Okay, so what we're... Shalana is actually our Ross coordinator. Oh, and wow. She's on my team. I do not know what she's doing. <laughs> <laughs> yes. We have a certified Ross service coordinator in the house. Yes. So I need to tell us. Yes. I need to tell us. I have an idea because I already know what she's doing. Yes. Because I need to tell us. Yes. 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 But she, um, she's our third coordinator, but she has been on it from day one. So if she mm -hmm. wants to share, how I'll, long have you been the Ross Service Coordinator? Since November of uh, 2021. What oh. do you do as a Ross Service Coordinator? Um, I work with the residents to make sure that they receive the services that they need. So I do assessments on them and um, like help them if they're looking for employment, trying to go back to school. Um, financially, and I work with the seniors as well. Oh, okay. so get the services that they need. True, yeah. because um, for your senior residents, that they're probably not necessarily looking for right. a job. Right. Right. You right. just help them to age in place. Right. 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 Independently, right. successfully. Yeah, it was she great. She does. She does that. <laughs> <laughs> I do know she does that, but. <laughs> Yeah. You were saying something? No, no, no. The Ross is for three years on like mm -hmm. FSS, FSS, and it'll be over and over and over every year. Ross, you get it, you sit pretty until your, your third year, then you can bring a farm. Can you pay for a platform? Repeat that. Can you pay for a platform if you've never gotten a Ross for? You people? Me? 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 Absolutely. Okay, Absolutely. So you can yeah. the yeah. 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 Absolutely. Okay. Okay. You people can apply. Okay. I okay. highly encourage you people to apply. Yes. Eligible applicants are um, <clears throat> public housing authorities, of course. Tribes can apply. The Tribes Housing Authority, which they're called tribally designated housing entities. Nonprofits with a 501c3 letter from the IRS, that's federal level, or even nonprofits without a 501c3 at the state level, where they're just state recognized. Resident associations can apply. So I definitely, definitely highly encourage you to 
try to make your residents uh, uh, legally formed, because they have to be legally formed, at, at least the state level to be a state recognized nonprofit. Not to mention the official of having a board and all that stuff that's um, mandatory. And apply because resident associations actually get priority funding. It's extremely easy for a resident association to get the ROSC. Extremely easy for a resident association to get the ROSC. Um, how much can you request under a ROSC? So if you have 50 units, you can apply for one ROSC service coordinator, which qualifies you to get $245,850 over the three years. If you have over 1,000 to 2,000, you can request two Ross Service Coordinator and end up with 491,700. If you have over 2,001, you can request and get three Ross Service Coordinators and end up with 737,550. Um, a nonprofit organization can actually submit three applications. So a nonprofit is the only applicant type that can propose to serve different housing authorities. And when I was a grant reviewer, I mean, nonprofits made good money just doing that, where they'll serve different housing authorities and they'll take a little bit for admin to administrate it for the housing authority and they're serving each housing authority and each of their thing. Well, it wasn't this much, but it was a, a little longer this at that time. A housing authority can <clears throat> serve three different, uh, I'm sorry, nonprofit can serve three different housing authorities, and in their application, they're requesting three um, service coordinator if the housing authority is large enough. So a nonprofit can get actually three of these awards in a year. Okay. So I have a trick question for you. How many service coordinators can you request if you have 150 units? One. One. <clears throat> three. He's good at math. <laughs> Why can you request three? Hmm? Because my can go in and do it too. Oh, yeah. Oh. yeah. <laughs> so remember, all you need is 50. So if you have a resident association go in, do 50. The nonprofit go in, do 50. The housing authority go in, do 50. You have three separate ones serving the same housing authority. Even though if you put it all in one application, you just end up with one. So. Uh, I think about those things because it's my bread and butter. So um, that's a way that you can strategize to get the most out of Ross, which these housing authorities did. Right? So they did not have many public housing units, but by strategizing this and one that and one the other, you can end up with winning three losses in one year if you strategize. So the question was asked if new applicants, if it's good to apply as a new applicant, yes you can. Because in 2020, Ross had 35 million and they've had this 35 million for the last um, three years. Actually, I've been hearing rumors that they're doing away with it. I don't know why. There are other similar type of programs, but they haven't yet. Resident associations get priority funding 25% of the money is set aside for resident associations. So resident associations actually can get 8.75 million, but they do not. They only get 1.5, 1.1, 3.1. Why aren't they not getting their priority money? Why are resident associations not getting the money? Are they not applying? Huh? So are they not applying? They're not applying. They're not legally formed. They're not organized. They're, you know, or another one could be they don't, they have no clue Ross is out there. <laughs> so if they 
If you help them to get formed at their level and help them to get state recognized, state recognized for some states is just an online process and you're good to go. They'll, they'll email you your state uh, certificate that you're a state nonprofit. That will enable the resident association to be able to get the priority funding and get this money. Not only that, three different resident associations can apply separately, serving their development. And they can hire their own Ross service coordinator and have their own Ross program in the same housing corridor. I'm sorry, I just want to be clear. It's not the jurisdiction wide resident council, like each, each one of my properties are currently. Each one of your properties. Can, oh my goodness. Thank you. And I learned that just this morning uh, because I, I did not. And we, this is our second round of laws. And um, when, I, I, when, I, when you said that, and I'm like, who's saying that the housing authority could have gotten it and my resident uh, could have gotten it at the same time? I know they could get it because the first time we got it, the resident council is the one that got it. The second set around, then that was the, the, the housing agency. So I, I was already strategizing. I said, okay, next go around, we split this up. So we can do more. I mean, it, it just makes sense because you will have more if you can get it from both my resident council and my house authority have had it before. So, you know, just you can, if you can get it again and have double the money, you can do double the work for your resident. For sure. So that that's huge because you can you can work you can if you have um, three hundred units that one coordinator cannot service those under, even though you like you you only could get one for that um, amount of uh, families she can't serve all of them if she wanted to uh, you know Are they and, uh, to and not do um, families. I'm sorry. Are they able to serve the same families? Like, no, no. You have to. I, you, you can't serve different, different families. Right. Right. Okay. Right. Right. Okay. So, so right. in the this is a scenario. I've got six individual <laughs> properties, and each one of those is developing their resident council. So I can only get three of those this year for three years. Next year, I can use the, the other three to apply as well for another three years, so that I've got all six covered. Am I correct in that thing? Uh, no, there is a, a limitation there. So every housing authority is limited at three service coordinators. So you can only get three sort of service coordinators at any one time. The three you're probably thinking about with the nonprofit, they're serving different housing authorities. Yes. Mm -hmm. okay. No, that's still fine. Mm -hmm. I can figure it out. Okay, I got a different route. I already figured it out. Okay. <laughs> 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 she, she, we only have 30 issues. So I'm two for two now. I don't have them. I still can't get them. You still can't? No, I only have 38 units. Oh, you only have 38 units. You can partner with another. You can. We can. We can. We can. <laughs> and just have two <laughs> part time service coordinators and split everything. Cool. Thank you. So, um, in 2020, renewals got 20 million, new got 16, 19 million, 17, 18 million, 12. So, not that great of a difference. So, new applicants are getting funded really well as well. What do you spend the money on, or what how it allows you to spend the money on? So, if you have your one service coordinator, you can request an annual salary, which includes fringe benefit um, of seventy-two thousand dollars. Because a lot of times, oh uh, when the oh service God. coordinator gets that first check, they're like they're like seventy-two divided by twelve, you know. But uh, fringe benefits are in this amount. Yes. The annual training and travel, 
So training is really, really important for the service coordinator, especially now with mental health issues going on. That's really rampant. We have a lot of new lingo, new terminology going on, and there's a lot of sensitive topics going on right now. So to get your service coordinator trained that they can navigate those changing waters is really important. So this is for training and travel every year. Then you have $7,450 every year for administrative costs. So um, the service coordinator can get a new computer, um, software, new desk, chair, office supplies, all that stuff to outfit them. Um, a tracking software, if the housing authority doesn't already have its universal um, or essential tracking software. And then, um, your, if you, you have two service coordinators, that's how it goes as well. You just times this by two, times this by three. That's what you get the salary, that's what you get for the annual training and travel, that's what you get for the administrative costs. <clears throat> so, just to backtrack, that those are the three things that you spend the money on for the boss service. May I ask the, oh, never mind, uh, okay. I didn't see my question. You want to say it anyway, so maybe you can answer <laughs> someone else's <laughs> question. <laughs> 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 Um, I was going to ask, was that for the, the 2500 for the entire grant period, but it's annual training. So um, the 2500 I can spend 25 per year, correct? Mm -hmm. Yes. On training. Yes. So trainings like these can get compensated out of cost. Um, the American Association of Service Coordinators, mm -hmm. did you know that? There's an American Association mm -hmm. of Service Coordinators. You should definitely be going to their conference every year. Um, it's a nice conference. Uh, what's the role of the service coordinator? Service coordinator goes in, does case management, advertise the program to the residents, get the residents in there, sit down with the residents, do a um, needs study. What are your strengths? What are your weaknesses? What are your goals? What are the barriers to your goals? And then provide the residents with supportive services from the community or local or directly to overcome those barriers. Um, follow up to make sure that you're meeting their goals, that you have um, follow up and evaluation and reporting. Can you go back to the story you want this and this one? <laughs> I just like to keep it on the phone. <laughs> um, <laughs> you took our emails. You said you emailed. You're gonna be emailing us this. Yes, I will. She will email you. I'm telling you, she will email you. Why are we? This is what you know. It's like, oh, Sabrina, so I forgot to send the contract. I'm like, don't worry about it. She will email you. That's the response. She's got the sign-in sheet. Oh, I do. I was waiting to get it to him. No, but, mm -hmm. uh, just so just so we're clear, as long as you bring in the money, you can email me all you want. <laughs> I don't care. Just free money. I can't have too much of it. I wish you were on my phone. An important responsibility of the service coordinator is resident engagement. Because remember, these residents, they're already disengaged. Mm -hmm. They're already living a subsidized lifestyle. That means they're disengaged from normal society. Normal society, you pay for what you have. So if you're subsidized, you're outside of normal. <clears throat> so if you don't engage them and keep them in the program so that they can achieve self-sufficiency, <clears throat> They'll just want to continue. So engagement is really, really important. So this is one of the responsibilities of the court. Mm -hmm. yeah. Extremely important. There's no way you can do case management if the person isn't engaged. You can't. You can't do any of these mm -hmm. if the person isn't engaged. Mm -hmm. So you have to be creative. When I assist a housing authority to win the loss, I say, please hire someone that's highly energetic, highly creative. 
and understand the people that they're working with. You yeah. can't you have mm-hmm. to speak their language. Mm-hmm. Okay. They're low income, they have some a subsidized lifestyle, a subsidized mindset, you can't speak regular language mm-hmm. to them. So that's important, which is why the training dollars are so important is you need to get because you may not have that naturally so you need to be able to train be trained to talk to them in their language um the areas of me that hud wants you to focus on are the digital inclusion is very important especially since covid they pushed this like crazy because so many people were um, what do you call it, detached mm-hmm. in their houses, so they didn't have connectivity, so this is important. Education, helping the residents, especially the elderly and uh, the ones with disability. Um, employment is huge, helping them with their financial literacy, because if you're helping them to gain employment, but they're not saving, you know, if you're not saving it, it doesn't even matter that they had it in the first place, so you need to save it and grow it. Health and wellness, the re-entry population, they want you to assist them as well. And as you know, we have a whole new pandemic. <clears throat> administrative costs. So you can be very creative with your administrative costs, right? Mm-hmm. Um, so Ross, the Ross program, when you are assisting the participants, they want you to go out into the community and get supportive services from.